look at our beautiful earth isn't it beautiful is there any specific color that we can assign to a mother earth yes it's blue in fact earth is called the blue planet do you know why this is because 71 percent of the earth's surface is covered by water and 29 percent is covered by land now water is a mundane thing it is a colorless tasteless odorless substance then why nasa and other research centers are spending dollars to discover water in space let us find out the reason we need water to perform basic activities in our lives imagine a day in your life without water difficult even isn't it this is because water helps us to perform various activities like drinking cooking bathing washing clothes and even during emergencies like to extinguish fire water is also a vital component of human body about 60 to 70 percent of human body is covered by water water is present in our cells which is the building block of our human body it also helps us to regulate body temperature by sweating and respiration it also helps us to perform metabolic activities like excretion of waste and absorption of nutrients by blood so do you see how important water is to us now the part of the earth's surface that is covered by water is called hydrosphere what does it actually mean hydrosphere the term hydro means water whereas sphere refers to the spherical shape of the earth so hydrosphere is one of the subsystems of the earth let us look at those subsystems if you peep outside your window what do you see you see water land living beings and air which you can't see but you can feel now look at this picture here in this picture what do we see we see mountains mountains are part of lithosphere which is the land cover we can also see rivers rivers are the part of hydrosphere which is the part of the earth that is covered by water we can also see we can't see it but we can feel it air the part of the earth that is covered by air is called atmosphere look at this girl and the vegetation cover the girl and the vegetation cover are part of biosphere biosphere refers to the living beings in all three spheres so these subsystems are interconnected and hydrosphere is an important part of this subsystem let us know more about this hydrosphere hydrosphere comprises of saline water bodies which are salty like oceans and seas there are five major oceans in the world like pacific ocean arctic ocean atlantic ocean indian and southern ocean in hilly regions we find mountains are snow capped we also find moving sheets of ice called glaciers glaciers and ice caps are also part of hydrosphere these glaciers and ocean caps eventually melt during summer and give birth to rivers 
rivers lakes and streams are fresh water bodies they are also part of hydrosphere in areas where water is not found in abundance people dig wells or sometimes install tube wells and hand pumps why do they do so this is because to tap underground water which is present below the earth surface aquifer is a special body of underground water where water is preserved between two layers of rocks aquifer is a special body of underground water which is present between two layers of rocks so aquifer and underground water are also part of hydrosphere do you know water is also present in clouds in the form of water vapor can you help me to answer this question which of the following is a fresh water body is it sea river or ocean the correct answer is river we just read that water is present in clouds in the form of water vapor which is the gaseous form of water apart from this there are also two other forms of water which is the liquid form that we usually see liquid form of water and a solid form of water which is ice in nature water can change its state from one form to another in the process called water cycle it is a continuous process which ensures unlimited supply of water on the earth's surface thus we can tag water as a renewable resource but does it mean that we can misuse water absolutely not this is because if we misuse water then nothing will be left for our future generation why is that so although 71% of the earth's surface is covered with water and water can renew itself but we still have scarcity of water why is that so in fact you will be surprised to know that there are few places where water is treated as a commodity like oslo san francisco etc in fact water has joined gold and oil and other precious commodities and they are traded on wall street so don't you think that we must be concerned about the crisis of water we cannot misuse water this is because not all of the water present on the earth's surface is accessible a maximum part of water that is 97% is in saline form in oceans and seas which we cannot use out of the remaining 2% is locked up in ice caps and glaciers just 1% of the water is the fresh water which is found in rivers and lakes which we can use so you see we have very limited supply of water on the earth because of this we have scarcity of water on earth in fact there are few places on earth where water is treated as a commodity like oslo and san francisco in fact water has joined gold oil and other precious commodities and are traded on wall street so we must be concerned about the crisis of water isn't it now the 1% of water that is available on earth is not evenly distributed take the example of india in india we have ganga which is the third largest river in the world we also have thar desert which is a dry arid waterless region not only in india but the distribution of water is uneven throughout the globe in northern hemisphere maximum part is occupied by land whereas in southern hemisphere oceans occupy greater portion look at the two poles north pole in north pole we have 
Arctic Ocean which is a water body and in South Pole we have Antarctica which is a landmass. So you find a contradiction in the distribution of water throughout the globe. We already know that water is needed by us to perform basic activities. Apart from this, water also has several other utilities like it helps to regulate global climate by bringing rain, but global warming disrupts this. What happens is that global warming reduces the rate of rain and they do not add up to the fresh water bodies. Also, due to excessive heating, the glaciers and ice caps melts and they join the oceans. Therefore, the availability of fresh water falls and the availability of saline water increases. So, the cycle the and the regulation of global climate by water bodies gets disrupted. Look at the picture of sharks. Sharks are very dangerous. We all are scared of sharks, isn't it? Where do they live? They live in oceans and seas. So, hydrosphere is also the habitat of marine animals. Now, what happens if their homes gets destroyed? The marine animals would die. Now, what will happen? Sharks helps to maintain the ecological balance of oceans by eating small fishes. So, the ecological balance of ocean will get destroyed. So, if we want us to be protected at our homes, we must also protect the homes of these animals. Hydrosphere also helps us to transport bulky goods at cheaper rates. Fishes. If you love having fishes, you must know that they come from rivers or oceans. So, hydrosphere also provides us with tasty food like fishes. So, do you see how important hydrosphere is to us? Therefore, we all must use water judiciously and conserve it so that we can use it in the present as well as in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now